Don't pick your skin, pick bandage. Hello Perfect Beauties, my name is Daisy and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my experience with CO2 laser treatment. So, you guys know that I am the CEO of Banish, and so Banish is it's based on the microneedling treatments that have been done. It's more of like an at-home way of microneedling. The reason why I started Banish was because I was actually wanting to get laser done on my face, and then the plastic surgeon who's gonna perform it actually recommended microneedling to me, and that's how I discovered it. And so I never had any kind of laser treatment done on my skin until recently, and I wanted to tell you guys the benefits and the pros and cons in my experience with it. First, why did I decide to do it? I still have a few residual acne scars, um, especially along the temples of my face, and this is very exposed light, but I do sometimes have it, and it kind of bothers me. I was trying, trying to figure out like how to get rid of those acne scars because they're really, really deep, and they do like form creases, I think, on the sides of my face sometimes. And so I just wanted to see if there was any way of getting rid of it. I went to a dermatologist, and she you know, was recommended CO2 laser treatments, and so I decided to just try it out to see how it would compare with my microneedling results before and also if it would help with my acne scars on my temples. Before the treatment, basically, they gave me this cream I needed to use, and the cream was $95, and I'm not sure exactly, I don't remember what the cream had, but it's basically used, you're supposed to use it two weeks before you start the CO2 treatment, and the reason why you use it is because ethnic skin, like Asian skin, Hispanic skin, um, African American skin, we tend to like develop hyperpigmentation and even skin tone the after being exposed to like light. And the laser is like not very good for people who have ethnic skin, and so that's why um, lasers only work on people with light skin, I believe, um, because if you do it on dark skin, it can like really damage and like almost like. I think bleach the skin or something so I used that for two weeks beforehand and it was really inconvenient because I had to put the cream in the fridge and I, I was traveling constantly and so I did forget to use the cream <laughs> um, like probably 40% of the time and then for the day of the treatment so basically what laser is what I understood the co2 laser it is really dependent on the machine that they use but it's basically like they have like almost like a pen it's kind of like the pen stamp that vanished a little bit but instead of those um like the bristles and the little needles from the pen stamp instead of that it's like like a laser thing where it will like pu like puncture a tiny little hole um, in that so it almost looks like a velcro square and what they do is they just kind of like put it around the face and it'll just like penetrate little holes in the face. So before they do that, they put in um, a numbing cream on your face, and it's really interesting because you can't feel your face, can't really feel anything that's going on, and then they'll put it on, You like they leave it for like 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever, and then you go underneath the laser, the laser thing, okay? So they put those goggles on you that you see um, in those laser pictures, and then they start the treatment. What was the pain threshold like? I think the pain threshold was a lot more painful than using the Banish Kit or microneedling. Um, and I'm not saying that because I want to promote the Banish Kit, but the reason why it was painful to me was you have no idea um, the amount of pain that is going to come in different areas of your face because what happens is, is like certain areas of your face is like not painful at all and certain other areas it like I felt like it touched the bone so it, it like really really hurt and you don't have control over like the holes going in so unlike microneedling when you're rolling the roller you can actually like feel feel it going into your skin so you know if it does hurt you can use a little bit of a lighter pressure or you know if you feel good you can use a little bit of a heavier hand whereas for the laser it was just like ah <laughs> like I don't know what it's gonna feel like and then she'll she'll move the um the, the laser beam or whatever to another section another section another section another section so you no know, like it, it just it, the pain is different depending on where it is on your face, but you don't know like where they're gonna move next on your skin. So it was just, I guess, the anticipation 
that really made it painful. Certain areas of my face, I could barely feel it, and other areas, I was like, it like really hurt. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, do you, do you know like when you get fills in your teeth where they put that numbing cream in? It was like, you don't really know what it's gonna feel like because in different areas of your teeth it, it will hurt or not hurt. Um, it kind of felt like that. So that was that experience. And it feels kind of similar to like getting laser done on your hair or bikini line. It's this, like you can smell like a little bit of smoke coming out. <laughs> I feel like you can smell it heat being smoky. And then sometimes I needed to take breaks so sometimes it was kind of like too much for me to handle. So I asked the nurse to take breaks and sometimes she would take breaks or go to another spot before going back to the other section. Basically after the laser treatment, I think it took an hour or two, that's where the healing really begins. So after the laser treatment, I think they put hydrocortisone on your face and so they put some kind of like gel or cream to really moisturize and make sure you're not gonna itch the face. And the hardest part about the laser treatment, and I would say the worst part about it is the downtime. The downtime is worse. Um, and it was really hard for me to schedule this appointment. I tried for six months to schedule it, but I basically couldn't be like in an event or somewhere where I like would need to show my face somewhere. So like, you guys know like I run a business, so like, I go to a lot of business events and meetings and having a skincare line, I can't show up with my face being like super terrible. So it was really hard for me to schedule a time um, where I wouldn't have to make any kind of appearance <laughs> or like make YouTube videos or do a Facebook Live or whatnot. That was the hardest part. The cost was about $650, I believe, for the laser treatment. I did get a discount on it, but the, the doctor recommended me to do three to five sessions of that. So in total, if you were to do all of the sessions, it'd probably be about $2,000. So it is definitely not something that you can just like, like do it on a whim. Um, you definitely have to do your research and kind of think about the investment and if it makes sense for you. The downtime, so basically you look like you have, you know, a burn on your face. Um, your face is very, very red. So when I did video calls, I turned down the light to like the very, very like lowest light so you could barely see like my face and the burn. And also you can't exercise for a week because you don't want like bacteria from your sweat getting into your face. You can't wear makeup and you can't really like do anything to your face. If you're gonna wash your face, you wash it with very light tepid water, but even if you're showering, you don't wanna shower like with your head to the shower head. You wanna do it to the back so that way like the soap and stuff won't go on your skin and irritate it. The first day was fine. Second and third day you get bronzing on your skin, so that means like it looks like um, like the basically like the Velcro, like holes. Okay, so it looks like Velcro because it looks like Velcro, the laser is like a Velcro square, and then it looks like that Velcro square was stamped on your face all over. And so those tips of the Velcro became brown. So you look like, you literally look like, like brown tip Velcro all over your face. Um, so that happens for a couple of days, and then in between there, your face starts to itch really bad. So I was applying hydrocortisone cream on my face, and then I applied, um, I think, Aquifer a little bit, um, just to like keep the itchingness to a minimum. And then after um, your skin bronze, your skin starts to peel. So the peeling process is really why you get the laser done, because what the laser tries to do, it's very, very similar to microneedling, is microneedling again puts little holes in your skin to rebuild collagen. The laser is trying is like basically um, zapped away, you know, a small little like chunk of your skin to promote collagen growth inside. So that's why your skin is repealing because that old skin is shedding off. Um, so you really look like a snowman <laughs> um, afterwards because all your skin is like white and shedding on your shirts and everything. Um, and you have a lot of peeling, especially along the jawline and along the hairline. So you just look like a snowman for a few days. Afterwards, you can't go out in the sun. If you're gonna be driving, you need to wear a lot of sunscreen to make sure the light, um, the UV rays are not gonna affect your skin and develop like hyperpigmentation after because your skin is so sensitive and raw because literally like laser burned off the top layer of your skin and burned off part of your face. 
And so you just really have to be careful. Overall, did I see results? I thought I did see results after like the fourth or fifth day. I felt like there's a type of shininess you get with lasers. Um, and I've noticed this in some people. I've noticed that like when people get laser treatments on their face, there's this kind of shiny, glossy, thin kind of skin. It looks really like, it's not oily, but it's just like, it's like a shine. You know what it looks like? It looks like those photo, the, those things you print on photo paper. That's what it looks like. So I started seeing that on my face and I was like, oh, this is nice because it, it seemed like it would smooth things out and whatnot. But afterwards, um, I realized, <laughs> afterwards, now I've done it like three months later, I don't really notice like any difference to be honest because my scars, I believe, maybe this might be the reason. I think my scars are way too deep and the laser didn't really do anything because my scars were already so deep and maybe because I did use you know the Banish Kit and microneedling before, um, I felt like the laser didn't penetrate anymore, didn't fix anything that the Banish Kit hadn't already fixed. So I think maybe if I did the laser treatment before I used you know, the Banish Kit and microneedling, then I might have seen a difference, but because I've been using the Banish Kit for so long, it didn't really do anything that the Banish Kit could have done. But that's just my experience. I've looked online and it seems like for a few people, especially those with pale skin, it has done a really great job. But for me personally, because my skin in general, my skin is very, very thick. Um, I have very thick, like, I don't wanna say tight skin, but my skin is very like, like thick. <laughs> so my scars are very, very deep because my skin is very, very thick which meant my acne was very, very bad when I had it. Um, that's why I didn't really see like too much of a result. Um, I actually did sign up for two more sessions of the CO2 laser because that's what the doctor suggested, but I actually called back and canceled them because even though I did put my like half of a deposit down for the treatments, it wasn't worth the downtime, especially with someone like I just can't be gone for two, like for two weeks that was just like really hard and I can't and oh and you can't exercise right so like for me not exercising and just like staying at home and like not going out and like you know even going to the grocery store I felt really awkward and uncomfortable because like my skin looked like it burned but it was like burning of like velcro boxes on my face so I just like was very not confident and it reminded me a little bit of back when I had acne because like I hadn't felt so self-conscious of the way I looked before in such a long time so it kind of brought me back to those days. So that's why I kind of decided not to do it again simply because I felt like the downtime wasn't really worth the upside because I didn't really see an upside and I asked um, people around me and they said nope I don't see a difference in your skin but I mean that's that's that so yeah probably not going to do it again. I might try like Fraxel lasering or I might try other procedures to help with the acne scars on my temples. Again, the acne scars on my temples are very, very deep and the only reason why it bugs me so much is because when I smile, it kind of dips in sometimes. Now, that's the only reason it kind of bugs me. Um, Banish and microneedling has done really great for re for reducing the color in it and it has done a really great job with the more medium acne scars around here but it's just I have just a couple that really ruined it you know like ruined it for the rest <laughs> for like the rest of my face so I'm just trying to figure out you know maybe I do have to live with them which is totally fine because they are super 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 deep acne scars but whatever I can do to help them hopefully it'll work so thank you all so much for watching and if you guys had CO2 laser done before how do you compare it to the Banish Kit or to microneedling or to chemical peels or whatnot? I would love to hear your experience. And until then, I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.